I quite like my Hymex, but that may look stupid without any crew. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. So today I thought I'd take a look at fitting figures into my diesel fleet, in particular the Hymex, just because they need doing really. But one thing to consider is, of course, is if you put crew at one end, does it look stupid when you run it round the other way and there's no one in there? Well, horses for courses really, but it does look silly when your trains come trundling around. And I've seen them at exhibition loads of times and there's no one driving the train. Perhaps a ghost train, who knows. But before you do it, you have to consider, you know, if, if your locos are going to always face one way, is it worth doing and what's available? Well, in this video, I look at the options from Monty's Models, um, from Backman and from that extremely expensive source, the rubbish on eBay. Now, before we go any further, I just thought I'd mention next week's video, because what I thought I would do is dip my toe in the mysterious depths of CVs, in particular CV29. And I can make one promise. If you're into CVs and don't understand 20, uh, CV29, you certainly will do by the end of that video. Honestly, I've had a great way around it. It's a piece of cake. So whatever you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment in the comment section down below and also give this video a big thumbs up. Catch you later. Now I do understand the fear that some people have about taking the body shells off. Now the way I do things is I've got this old blanket. So if screws drop off or whatever, they don't bounce very far. I'm not going to scratch the bodywork on this. Um, but a word of caution, this is a Hymec and it has horns on the outside. Class th some well, later class 37s are the same and these break off all the time. So how do we get the cover off? Well, in the instructions it says that there are four lugs and if you can see here, if I zoom you in, That is where the lugs are. They're either by this there or there. So what I need to do is, it says just prise it apart with your fingers, but I think the best thing to do is use little bits of sort of, you know, business card. So what I do is I just get, drive this in here, prise it in and it will force that lug out. So all you've got to do is repeat that four times. And don't, don't use tools for this because all you'll end up doing is scratching the body shell. So I've got two more to do. Which is about there. I can feel the resistance of the lug. That one there. And then finally, this one here. Then hopefully when I turn it over, it should just drop out. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Easy. Right. And I mentioned about the lugs. Let's zoom in a little closer. And if the camera will focus up, these are these little lugs here. So there's four of them and they locate, they go down. Well, in fact, you can see the trace now where the, uh, where they came down. Right, four little lugs. There we are. Right, so how do we improve this? Well, clearly we don't have driverless chain trains. So what I will do now is I shall take out one of the cabs to fit uh, a crew in here. So which one should you take out? Well, if you think you're going to run a 3A or a 1B perhaps, um, for example that's a express passenger in the Bristol area so if you're going to use this to pull passengers you might use this end and therefore fit the crew in here and then leave the others em empty. If of course you're going to have sound in there you need to take this out, the, um, this section out of the other end anyway because that's where the speaker will go. So how do we take it off? Well, I use a flat edge screwdriver, I turn it over and I then prise it and you see the cab area start to lift. When it lifts straight up, stop it before it gets to this cross section of perspex because you don't want to damage that. And it, 
There you are, easy as that. And that's how easy it comes up. So, there's our little cab, so now we want some people. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and if you hit the little bell icon and go for all, then you get a notification every time I release a new video. Now at the Odd Model Railway Show, I have bought some of these diesel loco driver and diesel drive, uh, diesel loco second man and also a guard with his arms folded from Monty's Models. And these are quite um, decent really. I'm afraid they're a little more expensive than uh, the Backman ones, which actually already come painted. Um, but I do like these. They're, they are, you know, pretty nifty figures um, and of course you can paint them up as you see fit. Now, what I've got to do, I like to use a block of wood and you can see they've got a, a mounting stem. So I poke the stem into my little block of wood and then I'm free to paint them as I go. Now, I don't like to paint on metal like this um, and they always recommend that you should wash these beforehand so what I should do is wash them and then I will blow a, a light coat of Halford's white primer over these figures. But they are rather nice aren't they? Actually the wrong way around, there's the driver and there's the second man. There doesn't appear to be any flash on them either which is an advantage but they have got hats um, and that's not really um, that's quite an early type diesel look. Uh, I'm sure they just got in their engines and took their caps off. But anyway, let's blow a coat of paint over them and then crack on. Now, to paint these figures up, what do I use? Well, first thing I use is an optical visor because I can't see very well. I have, and it's just using acrylic paints, so I've got some uh, Tamiya thinners, but any old thinners will do. Um, I have some blue, which is, which is their uniform colour, which is regal blue. And that's not necessarily the right blue, I think it's actually darker than that. Um, so I've got some uh, a Vallejo, what's this one, German black brown. Um, and I t normally do the hair in a black brown colour. Um, but I can also add some of this to the blue to darken it down. And I've also got a dwarf flesh, whatever that is, um, for the face and hands. Brushes wise, I tend to buy from Premier and this is a 2.0 for the uniform and this is a 4-0 um, for the face and hands. So all I do then, in, in which particular order I do it, I do the flesh first, then I do the uniform which is obviously the uh, trousers and jacket and the hat and then I do the hair but I may mix some of this with some of that just to give it the right shade. And then finally, I come in with the brown um, and do the hair. And I have all these little mixing things to um, mix them together. And these, are, these, no, these aren't clearly expensive paints, they're just stuff I've picked up. But the, the, these brushes are quite decent. So, first thing I should do is their flesh, fleshy parts. Mm. Mm, matron. Now these paints from Citadel, once you give them a shake, are quite interesting really because they have this kind of strange lip and they are ideal then just for picking up tiny amounts of paint. And the reason I do the flesh first, if you start with a lighter one, hence the white uh, coat of Halford's primer, is because you can paint over with darker but you, it's very difficult to paint lighter if that makes sense so we just need his hands there and then with the driver and then we'll leave this about uh, 20 minutes or so to dry before we move on with the next one uh, the next colour. So whilst we leave these to dry, all I do with my brush is wipe it off on that paper towel and then dunk it in the thinners and rinse off any residue of the paint. So now it's about time for a little bit of uh, the uniform, which is the blue. So. We'll dab some of this on and see how we get on. 
taking a little bit more care, obviously, not to miss out the... Uh, sorry, to miss out, that is, the hands. And I also want to leave the, the white section as if it were his shirt. This blue looks okay. I thought I might have to darken it down a little bit. And if it, is, if it still does look a little bit bright, I can always do a bit of dry brushing on it a little later. So now, the other thing is, of course, is don't not to worry too much about his lower regions of his trousers because we are going to cut his legs off to uh, get him to sit properly. So we're pretty much there. All we need to do now is their hair and a little line down the front of their shirt, which will look like a tie. The Vallejo paints are very good because you get very little wastage because you, um, you're not pouring it out into um, larger bottles or containers or whatever. So it's uh, a good way of doing business, really. Well, there are our two little fellas all ready to go, and hopefully you can see I've even given a sort of look of a tie as well. Well, I'm afraid it's now time to butcher the crew, which means just cutting them off at the legs. And then hopefully they should sit in Come on, reason be well. And hopefully you'd agree, they look pretty good. So drop a super glue and super glue accelerator and that'll keep them in position. Now the super glue I'm using is Deluxe Rocket Rapid Fast Setting Medium Viscosity Sino Glue. Bonds in five to 10 seconds and uh, a can of super glue accelerator, which has cancer warnings on it. So hence it's a, a glove job and also a face mask when I'm spraying this. Pop him into position. Lovely. Move this stuff out of the way. And then with the accelerant, give it a shake. And then that should hold him there and then give him sort of 20 or 30 seconds and that should sort it out. Well we're now ready to fit the crew into our 3A61 which using the Ian Allen 1968 British Rail Headco's booklet tells me it's going to be a parcels train. Now to refit these little fellas this tongue has to go into this little slot and this bulkhead must sit in front of these two perspex lugs that are part of the glazing and also there's a very small lug on the front section of the glazing as well and that will clip over the top of here. Now this is a little more fiddly than you might think but it's a case of getting it in position first and then just giving it one hard press. So it's lining up that tongue at the bottom to make sure it's above the slot. And that looks pretty good. So now it's a case of pressure. Nope, that tongue is too far forward, so I need to tease it back a little bit. Never ever lose sight of those horns on the top of this loco because it's so easy to break them off. And now hopefully you can see that this tongue isn't lining up, it's too far forward. So it's a case of trying to get the screwdriver underneath and pull the cab back. A 
and I think that's in the right place. Hey, yes, beautiful. And there we go. Champion, two little fellas. I've had a change of heart. I've taken the figures back out. I think they sit too high compared to the, uh, the folks sat in the real thing from my book on the heyday of the Hymex. So I'm either going to reduce the height of the figures or take away the seats. Well, there's always time for a Dremel, isn't there? Well, here we are and I've cut them down and sadly most of Monty's models is now in the bin. Now, taking a look at this little bulkhead section behind, hopefully you can see that the, the level of their hats is below that height a little bit. And that's the sort of bit I'm aiming for just to get a, a couple of millimetres below that sort of bulkhead bit. So let's see how we get on now. Well, here we have the fellas refitted. And as you can see, the height is sort of much better. They should be central in the windscreen, as we saw from that photo. But as these are quite expensive from Monty's models, you've got to ask yourself, were they worth it in the first place? Well, probably not. So what are our options? Well, these cheap and cheerful little sitting figures are available on eBay for about the price of one or two of those Monty's model figures. But of course, the colours are absolutely dreadful. So what I think I'll do is I shall uh, quickly sever these, stick them in place, paint them up and so we can do a comparison. Now here are my next set of locomotive drivers mounted on a Wills Woodbine crib board and all I do is I bought some um, little crop clip mounts on eBay so I'll just take these outside and blow a coat of Halford's white primer over them. It's obviously easier to do these in bulk. Because the last thing you want to do is start changing the paint, uh, you know, cleaning the paint brushes out and everything else. So it's a case of doing all the faces and all the hands, then perhaps all the blue, and then the hair and hats and just do all these figures in one hit. Tedious, but somehow rewarding. Well, there they are, the class of 2021. Well, now it's time for a bit of home surgery. And using my little Expo saw, it's time to cut these up and I'm going to cut them just above the hands. It would appear that the hands make them um, just a little bit too tall in the seat. So if I cut them here, hold, hold still fella. It's any pain. And here you can see the difference in height and also the difference in quality between the Montes models and the ones that uh, I've acquired from eBay. Clearly the Montes models are far superior, but I've put these in far too high. Of course, when you've done one loco, you tend to look at the ones you've done previously. And here is Falcon. I believe these crew, I used the Backman ones. And clearly these figures are far too high in the cab. And here's a picture of the real thing taken back on the 1st of July 1971. And I'm very grateful to Anthony Guppy for allowing me to use his Flickr image. She's running a 1C12, which is a, a Bristol Temple Mees down to Plymouth run. But as you can see, the crew sit far lower. And here they are removed. And as you can see, when you compare them to the Backman 1950 uh, Loco Crew pack, you see I've used one of the drivers and one of the other ancillary staff. Not too sure about the colour of the blue jackets. I think that's uh, a bit early for my 1968-1972 theme, but we can always paint those down. 
Well, as usual, I've severed these uh, individuals and I've, uh, I've cut them at different heights. So we've got a little bit of uh, disparity between there. Um, and I've also changed the glue. I've now, I'm now gluing these figures in with Araldite because what I find with those Hymex towards the end, uh, um, obviously away from the camera, when I was clipping them in, the figures were coming uh, unstuck. I think the super glue was just too brittle. So I'm now using Araldite to glue them in once I'm sure of the, the, the heights are correct. And as you can see, I've painted them in with um, the normal paint rather than that very light blue. And now with Falcon's crew refitted, I think it looks much more sensible rather than um, them scraping their heads on the roof as they were previously. Now these two Hymex both have sound. This one here has got a lock sound uh, 4 chip in it with its associated probably a 10 ohm speaker. Um, and it's a weathered Hymec and I bought this from Lord and Butler in South Wales and it's been very beautifully weathered by Adrian also known as Dirty Boy. Nice model. And this one here is one of my own. I started the weathering process on it and I recently acquired a few days ago a Locksound 3.5 chip and talking very nicely to James of DCC Train Automation he managed to acquire a Hymec 3.5 sound file which he's now put in it. So what I thought, I, oh sorry, and now I've actually sealed this speaker and if I put these two locos on the layout and you listen to the sound difference between them hopefully you'll pick up a difference between the sound because this speaker isn't sealed. Now I've no idea who produced these sound files so I could be just um, wasting my time because one has a better sound or a different sound than the other. So we'll just pop them on the on the layout and listen to them side by side and then we'll seal this speaker and see if it's made an improvement. So here we are in position and I've put my lapel mic on this helping hand and I'm just going to move it away from these locos a little bit in case it's too noisy. Right, so what I shall do first is flash up 7026, the unsealed uh, speaker of the version 4. Now to me it sounds a little bit tinny, so let's switch over to 7017. And hopefully you can hear that this one is more tinny. Okay, let's seal this one up with copy decks and see if there's any difference. Now, if you're a regular on the channel, you'll know that I quite like copy decks because it, you might say, strong adhesive for fabrics, carpets, etc. Um, but for plastics, it's not that strong and it's quite easy to peel back off. So what do I need to do? Well, first thing I need to do is get this speaker out of its housing. So I just poke that and hopefully it will kind of lift out. And there it comes. Ordinary little speaker. For some reason it says 1.5 watts on it. Four, oh, it's a 4 ohm 1.5 watt speaker. And just being a devil, I shall write that down. 
4 ohm one point five watts. Good material for my spreadsheet that is. Right, so copy decks. So it's a, 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 a sort of a, <laughs> it's like a fish fish pasty smell and all I do is I coat the inside rim of the speaker with this copy decks. Couldn't really be that much more difficult, really, could it? And then once I've done the inside of the rim, I pop the speaker in and then seal up these little gaps that you see at the sides. Easy. Okay, there are two cables and you need to put the two cables into the, obviously the two gaps. So you thread those in and then just push the speaker into place. Easy, easy. Right, now I want to put a bit more copy decks now in these gaps. And this tip takes a bit of time because um, you might not do it in one go. You might need to fill it in slowly and then apply some more sort of 10 minutes or so later. A little bit messy, but it's not one of these dreadfully toxic or carcinogenic uh, materials that we keep coming across in railway modelling. I'm just going to finish off with a little line of copy decks around the outside. And hopefully all should be well. Well, the copy decks had us a chance to dry, so let's flash her up and see if there's any difference. Well, I do think that's much better. So let's just switch to the other loco and flash that one. And hopefully you would agree that they are very, very similar. So let's go back to 7026 again. And hopefully you'll agree that that is a vast improvement. Now, no doubt we all have different ways of doing things. And some people despise this stuff because it's called black tack. And it's a lot stickier than blue tack. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And which is far less sticky than white tack. And what I do with it, I never use it on components that get warm, such as the chips. But what I do is I put a, do a dollop of black tack on the inside of the, on the underside, sorry, of the speaker. And then I fit this into the inside of the cab. Now I've obviously removed the other um, cab interior. So all I do is make, make sure I'm not pulling on those cables. I poke that speaker in there and then hopefully it should just simply pop together a 
like that. Now clearly there is a great big speaker in this window, but it's the other end. So that's the back end of this loco and then hopefully you shouldn't see it too easily. So there we have six finished locos, Falcon and his five little brothers. I think that they, with their crews, now look absolutely fabulous. Now to take it a stage further, on this particular loco, I then fitted the buffer detail. And if you ever want to waste a complete hour of your life that you will never have back, then crack on. It's a hell of a difficult job. I re-drilled all the holes um, with a one mil drill um, and then slowly glued each one in um, using a thin solvent glue, except for the, um, the main coupling, which I used <laughs> polystyrene cement. <laughs> I should hold myself my head in shame for saying that, but it was the only way I could get it to stay in there. Um, how long they stay on for, I'm not too sure. So I shall just leave this one to trundle around before I even consider doing the rest. It does look good, but um, it was an interesting evolution. As usual, I would like to thank you for watching the video and hope you've given it a thumbs up. Uh, so the people who donate to my channel and of course my patrons, if you'd like to be one, there's a button there and there should be a subscribe button there and a video here and here for you to watch in the meantime. See you next week. It's CVs. Don't miss it. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.